The young prince was proud of his body. He was strong and healthy as a result of the strict training he did every morning. His training program was taken straight from the gladiator schools, where men learn to fight for their lives. His greatest wish was to fight against the real gladiators, although he knew that his father would never allow it. Marcus had ended the tradition of gladiator fights in Rome. Maximus passed by the small group of men in the early morning light and noticed that the emperor's son was among them. He was not surprised. He had heard plenty of stories about Commodus, how strong and skilled he was. He had also heard that Commodus was a cruel man, but he tried not to believe that. There were always jealous people saying bad things about the royal family. Maximus walked to Marcus's tent. The emperor's guards led him through the entrance without any questions. They were expecting him. And your time limit is one minute and twenty seconds. The only light in the emperor's tent came from oil lamps. Marcus sat with his back to Maximus. He was writing his diary, and at first he did not realize Maximus had arrived. Caesar, you sent for me," said Maximus. Marcus, lost in his thoughts, did not reply. Caesar, Maximus repeated, "Tell me again, Maximus," Marcus said. "Why are we here? For the glory of the empire, sir." At first, he thought Marcus had not heard him. Then Marcus slowly got up from his desk and softly said, "Yes, I remember." He walked over a large to a large map of Roman Empire and waved a hand across it. "Do you see it, Maximus? This is the world I have made. For twenty years, I have tried to be a student of life and of men. But what have I really done?" He touched the map. For twenty years, I have fought and won battles. I have defended the empire, and increased it. Since I became Caesar, I have only had four years of peace. And for what? To make our border safe," said Maximus. "To bring teaching and law. And the time limit is one minute and thirty-five seconds." I brought the sword, nothing more. And while I have fought, Rome has grown fat and diseased. I did this, and nothing can change the fact that Rome is far away, and we shouldn't be here. But Caesar, Maximus started. But, but Marcus interrupted him. Interrupted him. Don't call me that, he said. We have to talk together now, very simply, just as men. Can we do that? Forty thousand of my men are out there now, freezing in the mud," said Maximus. Eight thousand are wounded, and two thousand will never leave this place. I won't believe they fought and died for nothing. What do you believe, Maximus? That they fought for you and for Rome," he replied. "And what is Rome, Maximus? Tell me." I have seen too much of the rest of the world, and I know it's cruel and dark. I have to believe that Rome is the light. And your time limit is one minute and fifteen seconds. But you have never seen here," said, "seen there," said Maximus. "You have not seen Rome as it is now." Maximus had heard stories about Rome. People in the cities were hungry. And the food prices were much too high. Some Romans had come, had become very rich, but most were poor. Bridges, roads, and ports all needed repairs, while tax money went into the pockets of the rich. There were many things wrong at the heart of the in, at the heart of the enormous empire. I'm dying, Maximus, and I want to see that there has been some purpose of purpose to my life. Marcus sat down again. It's strange. 
I think more about the future than the present. How will the world speak my name in the future? In the fu in future years, he held out his hand to Maximus, who took it and came to sit next to Marcus. Your time limit: one minute and fifteen seconds. You have a son," said the em said the emperor. "You must love him very much. Tell me about your home. The house is in the hills above Trigillo," Maximus began. "It's a simple place, pink stones that warm in the sun. There's a wa there's a wall, a gate, and a small field of vegetables." Maximus looked up and saw that the old man had closed his eyes as he listened. He was smiling. Through the gate are apple trees. The earth is black, Marcus, as black as my wife's hair, and we grow fruit and vegetables. There are wild horses near the house. My son loves them. How long is it since you were last home? Two years. Two hundred sixty-four days and one morning. Marcus laughed. I am jealous of you, Maximus. Your home is good, something to fight for. I have one more duty to ask of ask of you before you go home. Your time limit: one minute and fifteen seconds. What would you like me to do, Caesar? Before I die, I will give the people a final gift: an empire at peace. Should not be ruled by one man. I want to give power back to the Senate. Maximus was shocked, but sir, if no one man holds power. All men will reach for it. You're right. That is why I want you to become the protector of Rome. Give power back to the people of Rome. Maximus said nothing. You don't want this great honor. With all my heart, no. That is why it must be you, Marcus replied. But what about Commodus? Commodus is not a good man. I think you already know that. He must not rule. You are more of a son to me than he is. Marcus stood up. Commodus will accept my decision. He knows the army is loyal to you. A piece of ice struck Maximus's heart. I need some time, sir, he said. Of course. By sunrise tomorrow, I hope your answer will be yes. Now let me hold you as a son. Marcus put his arms around Maximus. Your time limit: one minute and thirty seconds. Maximus left the emperor's tent feeling anxious. One more duty, one he did not want, but could he refuse? He was a loyal soldier, loyal to Rome and to Caesar. He stood outside the tent, trying to think clearly. Suddenly, there was a voice behind him. "You are my father's favorite now." Maximus turned and saw Lucilla. As their eyes met, a shock of emotion ran through them both. It was not always true," said Lucilla. "Many things have changed since we last met," said Maximus, and he turned to walk away. "What did my father want with you? To wish me luck before I leave for Spain," he replied. "And your time limit is one minute." "You are lying," said Lucilla. I could always tell when you were lying. You are not very good at it. I was never as good as you, my lady. Lucilla did not try to deny it. Again, Maximus tried to leave. Maximus, please, is it really so terrible to see me again? No, I'm sorry. I'm tired from the bat from battle. He said. And you are upset to see my father so weak. Commodus expects your our father to name him in a few days as the next Caesar. Will you be as loyal to him as you have been to Marcus? This was a difficult question, but Maximus never forgot that he was talking to one of the royal family. I will always be loyal to Rome, he said. Do you know I still remember you when I speak to the gods? Said Lucilla, smiling. And your time limit is one minute and ten seconds. Good luck.